Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are in chapter five talking about implementing and deployment strategies for the test automation. And as a part of this, we are still in 5.1 talking about uh, integration to CICD pipelines. And finally covering the last topic of this, that is 5.1.3, explain the test automation dependencies for an API infrastructure. And as of this, uh, this particular topic, we'll be just discussing more about what it takes for the test automation to interact via API. Well, to get started, of course, we understand being a test automation engineer that uh, when it comes to different interfaces, which are open for the tool, that is the test automation tool to interact with the SUT matters to us. There could be different option possible for interfacing with the GUI, uh, sorry, the SUT, and there could be the graphical user interface, application programming interface, protocols or databases or web services. And we may have to pass through many other uh, options to basically reach out to the SUT. And does, does it becomes very important uh, for the automation engineer to understand that what kind of dependencies and challenges we are going to face and what kind of interactions we need to have when it comes to the API. Of course, API is not a direct interaction to the system. It may have certain other aspects to be taken into account for automations to take place. So to get started, of course, we are giving you a quick introduction first and then getting into the deep dive of what exactly contract testing is all about. So let's get into that. Of course, when performing API test automation, it is crucial to have the following information about dependencies to build a proper strategy. Number one, the API connections. Understand the business logic that can be tested automatically and the relationship between the APIs. It is indeed very important to understand there could be collection of APIs and how exactly these APIs are interacting with each other and what kind of connections we need to establish, like by providing what information the request, the get, the post, etc., are different requests which we have, and we may have to be tolerant of these information uh, in order to perform the required automation. Is it? It is as good as saying that what kind of permissions do you have on a on a SUT to perform uh, in order to control the execution? Like, can you place an order, or you, can you just retrieve the information, but you cannot trigger any action on it? So that's pretty much about the connections. The second option here is, of course, to understand the API documentation, which serves as a baseline for the test automation with all relevant information, which includes the parameters, headers, and distinct types of request response of the objects. The documentation certainly means that what are the information which you're going to supply with each of these requests, which you will be sending to the SUT via this API. So, of course, there are body, there are headers, there are parameters, and various other headers uh, inside that you may talk about authentication, the data type, et cetera, which you need to provide in order to make that request fulfilled with all the aspects to make this happen. So that is where these two becomes very important to be considered by the test automation engineer to make an interaction with the SUT via API. Further to add here, of course, uh, integrated automated API testing can be pretty much done by either the developer or the test automation engineers. However, with the shift left, it is recommended to support and divide the testing among different levels. For example, in the foundation level, we have covered component integration testing and system integration testing are mentioned, which can be extended with best practices called contract testing. Now, we will be talking in a short while what exactly contract testing is, but what we wanted to convey you that it can be performed by the developers depending on your organization structure or the test automation engineer as well. But at the same time, we need to understand when is the right time to perform them. Of course, as a part of integration testing, we look forward to conduct the API testing. But uh, in order to start early in the life cycle, we can get started as early as component integration and can, can continue till system integration testing. However, the component integration testing would be limited to the system itself whereas SIT would be between the systems if you have different other systems interacting with RSUT via these various APIs. So API can be at both the places and we will have to run the required API test as a part of it. But let's understand in more detail what exactly contract testing is. 
So the next one we are talking about is contract testing. And let's look at it. So of course the contract testing is a type of integration testing verifying that services can communicate with each other and that the data shared between the services is consistent with a specified set of rules. In simple words, when you talk about commercial of the self, for example, you have Amazon and Amazon does not have a payment option. However, COD is the only option what they have. But when we talk about the payment options like Visa, Master, MX, Net Banking, or any other kind of digital wallets, we are making use of a third party software to do this or make this happen. And that is where it becomes crucial for us to understand how these third party gateways would react or probably act when we have provided them certain particular set of information. So contract testing is just a label given to that when we particularly look forward to interact with these third party softwares working together with our SUT. And then we basically look forward to test the data exchange, which is more of like interoperability and kind of interactions which are taking place. And what would be the need of information to be supplied while performing the required test will be taken care by the contract testing itself. Further to add here, of course, uh, using contract testing, it provides compatibility across two separate systems to communicate with one another. It also goes beyond schema validation, requiring both parties to come to a consensus on the allowed set of interactions while providing for evolution over time. So number one, we would understand the type of interactions they are making, and it is a mutual agreement between the two systems that on what grounds and what criteria and what conditions and what kind of you know set of rules we would interact with each other. So as a part of contract testing, it's more of like we are implementing and verifying the contract agreement conditions uh, to check that the system are behaving according to that. For example, if I want to search for some flights on your server, like maybe you know uh, one of the flights from India is trying to interact with Singapore Airlines, then they must have agreed on certain terms and conditions that what kind of data you can request to us and based on these information, we will respond with this kind of information. And given that you don't provide me these minimum information, like the, the num number of passengers, the origin and destination, the date of flight, et cetera, I may not be able to respond back to you and your users may not be able to see a flight from Singapore airline. And that is where it becomes very important for us to understand that how exactly the data should be supplied with mutual consensus in order to work together. Also to add here, of course, uh, it captures the interactions that are engaged or exchanged between each service, storing them in a contract, which can then be used to verify both the, that both the parties adhere to it. One of the main advantage of this test type is that defects occurring from underlying services can be found earlier in the SDLC, and the uh, source of these defects can be more easily identified. So basically uh, by performing this contact testing, we are just trying to correlate to that of like uh, performing the testing could result into a lot of identifications. And finally, we can include those identification into the contract as well. For example, there might be a technical limitation that until unless uh, we give this information, the response may not be appropriate. Or for these requests, the response is not coming appropriate. So we may amend the contract accordingly after the testing is performed, that this is the bare minimum what we need to do in order to get the system working fine. Also being conducting the contract uh, testing, it also helps us to achieve the required advantages, like uh, we will be able to judge that uh, what kind of defects can we find, because it's very difficult at points to understand when the integration happens, that it's not easy to determine the defect are uh, related to the SUT or the third party applications which we are getting. So by con conducting this contract testing, we will be able to identify uh, API related defects much earlier in the life cycle, subjected we start with our API testing much earlier in the life cycle. Finally, to add here, uh, we have in the consumer driven approach to contract testing, the consumer sets its expectation determining how the provider shall respond to the requests coming from the consumer. In the provider driven approach to contract testing, the provider creates the contract which shows how its services are operating. So either way, this can be performed. That is consumer driven approach or provider driven approach. 
Consumer driven approach in simple word is when I'm an uh, application and looking forward to uh, go to Visa and Visa is trying to supply the information according to the need of the consumer that is Amazon. Okay, whereas uh, the provider driven approach simply means that it's more of like two different airlines. Okay, so how exactly the other airline would respond to it and they may have their set of rules and I need to stick to this. So it's more of like who will have more weightage. Okay, and that is the approach being used. So PayPal will have a fixed uh, set of rules that, okay, I'm going to give you only these information via the response and I cannot do beyond that. Then we need to adjust according to what Visa is offering me or PayPal is offering me. And that's called as provider driven approach. But if I drive things by using your API and I want you to provide those information, then this is consumer driven approach. Sometimes the technicality or sometimes the standardization plays a vital role in selection of consumer or provider driven approach. So contract testing can be of two different types, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial. Indeed, we come to the end of the chapter five here. We'll be looking at the sample questions in our very next tutorial. Stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.